So welcome everybody to back to school fun. And this is going to be fun. I hope we actually have some of our team members coming in to help me with some live demos. So that's always fun when you get to see other members of the team besides me. So everything that I'm doing today, there is a handout, but basically I just listed everything that I'm going to try and do in an hour. And I'm taking it all from units festivals and holidays, and I'm looking at the back to school unit. So everything is coming from this one area. So we have an overview that starts us, but I thought I would start with some of the all about me things. So we've got a whole slew of them. We actually just split these up because there was a great big schmozzle of activities. So it starts with draw a picture for kindergarten, some coloring, a worksheet, and then it gets into a little bit more complex things, a music and me booklet. So the picture would be for our littlest ones that don't read and write, make a picture showing what you'd like to do in music class. And <laughs> I have to always get rid of my Zoom controls. And then when I go to All About Me Coloring, I've got some things, I can tell this is kindergarten because it's light green, things that you might want to do in music class and you get to color those. I've got an all about me worksheet. So this is maybe grade two where they can read a little bit more. I am seven years old, I'm in grade two and draw some things that you like to do in music class. All about me too, I don't know what that one is. Oh, that's another one another version of it. So different grade levels. And then this music and me booklet, it's a foldable booklet. And so I would do this maybe third grade where they can do more of those words. Fourth, fifth, sixth, the Singo game is a fun mixer for them. So you let the kids go explore and see how many of the children in their class can snap his or her fingers. I can snap right, I can't snap left. No sound comes out. So if you can snap both fingers, you get to fill that in, or you'd write down uh, the name of someone who can snap her fingers, who will sing, I'm a little teapot, who can draw a musical note. And this, if you collect them afterwards, and you look at the names of the things that, the, uh, the names of the things, the kids that did the various things, you'll have an idea of maybe somebody knows an instrument in the orchestra, maybe somebody takes private lessons. And here's another version of it, named six songs we've listened to in class, someone who sings in the choir. And here's some teacher notes on this. So lots of good material in here. And if you're one of our French immersion teachers, we have single cards in French as well. Now I am moving on to our procedures and our how-tos. So this is our new slide. And I've put that in a lot of the August back to school lessons. I am going to change August lessons, but I'm not doing it until we get to September. But I think it's really important that we talk with the kids about how do you enter the music room? And every teacher has a little bit of different idea of how you want them to do this, but Decide in your own head what you want, and then bring up the slide and work your way through it. Where do you sit? How do you assign your spots and the sit spots? I like seating plans. They've worked really well for me. Really helps to keep behaviors in check. When I had kids sitting on risers, I would go two boys, two girls, two boys, two girls. And I guess we shouldn't be gender specific these days, but that's how I did it. And the kids were quite happy to do that because they had somebody they felt comfortable that they were sitting next to. However, sometimes they get a little bit too comfortable and they get chatty and they start fooling around. At that point, I do some switching and I might go strong child, weak child, strong child, weak child, and do that. Um, I also find if I can sit my kids so that the strong singers surround the ones that I know are a little bit weaker, I will have a lot better singing from that class. So I do make seating plans. I do like them. I like them for lots of reasons. How do you make lineups to leave? 
And there's lots of different ways you can do this, but some of my favorites, if you've got those flip floor form risers, you just watch and see yellow is being really quiet. You get to line up now. You get to line up if you're on the red because you're being really quiet. So finding some way of making it orderly. It's time, it's time to all get in a line. Follow the person who's closest to the door. Keep the beat in your feet. One, two, three, four. I used to do that and I'd completely forgotten it until this minute, but I used uh. to do that for lineups and um, that's how it works. We we use things and we forget them. How do we walk through the hall? In Music Play for Kindergarten, one of the first week's songs is, put your finger on your lip, on your lip. Put your hand on your hip, on your hip. Put your finger on your lip and your hand on your hip. Put your finger on your lip, on your lip, zip, zip. And that was taught to me by a kindergarten teacher I worked with. And she would do that before her kids would come to music. And so they'd come to music like this. They'd walk down the hallway like this. But it kept their hands away from the posters and the bulletin boards on the wall because the kids just love to touch those as they're going by. And after all the money that's been spent on bulletin boards, you don't want them ripped off the walls. And then you have to talk about the what ifs. What if there is a fire drill? And it's so scary if the you're in the very first music class of the year and the fire drill happens before you've gotten to this. So try and cover that as quickly as you can. What if there's a fire drill? You have to grab your class list. You need to get the kids lined up and you need to know where you go to muster. What if there's a lockdown? I think it's so incredibly sad that we have to prep kids for this, but we do. My, my own son-in-law actually was in Tabor, Alberta, and it was very shortly after Columbine, and there was kind of a copycat shooting in the school in Tabor. So my son-in-law was in sixth grade when there was a school shooting in his school. So that's many, many years ago when he was in sixth grade. That's 20-some years ago. But we do have to prep our kids. What if there's a lockdown? I met the teacher that had taught in um, the school in, I believe it was Newtown, that had all those grade one children killed. She was obviously still very, very traumatized, but because she knew what to do, she was able to keep her kids safe. So very, very sad we have to do this, but you need to go over it, whether you're Canadian school or American school. Now save this one till the very end of class, because if you do this one in the middle of class, everybody's going to have to go pee right then and there. So what if you need to use the restroom? What are your procedures? What are your policies? Strongly encourage them to use the washroom and wash their hands before they come to music class. That will help you out tremendously. So those are the procedures, the what ifs and the how to's. And we have early on in here as well, under extra resources, a song log. This is something for you to consider doing for each of your classes. So as you teach a song, and if you feel your kids are confident with it, write the song title in, where is it from? If I taught a sumbum kawaya kedu kadi from Nigeria in John Jacobson's unit, um, Our Musical World, I would put in that it's from Nigeria. What's the purpose of that song? It's just a little fun song for kids. I put in the date I did this. And then later in the school year, if you do one of those point systems where you give the kids a point if they've had a good class, 10 points they get to do some kind of reward day. <clears throat> for 10 points, I like to give them review and request. And we'd look at the song log and see which songs they had done and which songs they had learned. And of course, some of them might remember songs from last year or the year before, and that's, that's good too. And then we would try and do all those songs in the review and the request day. So a song log for each grade level is not a bad idea to do. This also really helps put things into cultural context. So in the national standards, this is your connecting piece. This is connecting and learning where songs come from, why certain songs were done. 
So I don't know if we have any questions at this point. Uh, I haven't been watching the chat, but do we have any questions at all, Michelle? No questions? Then I'm going to keep going and we're going to do some name games. So the name games, I'm bringing in two of our team members and you get to meet Carrie Lynn, who I'm sure many of you have talked to, and Morgan. Morgan is our sound tech. We'll move this back so you can see everybody a little bit better. And we're going to go through the various name games that we have in here and also the ones that we have in related songs. So these are related songs that are in the song list on Music Play and these are some extras that haven't been added to the song list yet. So the circle name game, you form a circle and we do pat, pat, out, pat, pat, out. I have done this with all ages from little, little people in my grandson's preschool class all the way up to sixth graders in our choir. So I start, Denise. Morgan. Carrie Lynn. And you just go around the circle and they say their name. I did this in a first grade classroom in my daughter's school last year. And it was really neat because as soon as I did this, the kids all said, they echoed what I had said. And I thought, oh, great. I need this help to remember names. Twice is better than once. So let's do the echo this time. Denise. And now you echo. Denise. Denise. Morgan. Morgan. Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn. Lynn. So that's second way to do it. It's a variant and it really helped me to remember more of the names in that first grade classroom. Here's another variant we did when we did children's choir last year. We had kids from all over the city. We really didn't know them well. And it's a way to get to know some of a, a little bit more about your students. So we asked them, what's your favorite animal? What's your favorite food? We ask them those kinds of things. And then without echoing this time, we do Denise, pizza. Morgan, sushi. Carrie Lynn, soup. <laughs> so that is a fun way to get to know your students a little bit better. Next one I'm going to do is Johnny Whoops. And if any of you have looked at the August lessons for pre-K kindergarten, I have been making extensive use of Johnny Whoops. So this is how I do it. I touch my finger, Johnny, 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 Johnny Whoops, Johnny Whoops, Johnny, 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 Johnny. And then I go to Morgan and I go, Morgan, we're going to do your name next. Would okay. you like it fast or slow? Ooh, fast. Okay, let's do Morgan fast. Here we go. Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. And you say along with me. Morgan, 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 Morgan. Morgan. Whoops, Morgan, whoops. Morgan, 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 Morgan. Carrie Lynn's going to be tricky. Oh. So how would you like your name, fast or slow? Slow. <laughs> okay, here we go. Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn. Whoops, Carrie Lynn. Whoops, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn. I've now said that name 10 times. It's going to stick in my brain for at least two minutes. So it helps. I also do loud and quiet. So Morgan, would you make, like your name loud or quiet? Quiet. Okay, let's do Morgan quietly. Here we go. Morgan, 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 whoops. Morgan, whoops. Morgan, 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 Morgan. And then I had some really clever kids who said, I want my name fast and loud. So let's do Carrie Lynn <laughs> fast and loud. That's oh kind of a tongue twister. Here we go. Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn. Whoops, Carrie Lynn. Whoops, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn. Don't ask me to do that again. <laughs> but that one is fun. Another fun one for your kindergartens, grade one, grade two is Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. My heart goes kaboom. Now, who stole the cookies from the cookie jar? This is not going to work as well on your first class because you actually have to know the kids' names. So either they come with name tags or you have to know at least a little bit of them. But if you know the kids' names, then we go, Morgan stole the cookies from the 
Cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then who? Carrie Lynn stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then who? Denise stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably the one that did steal them. So I usually try and go through to the end of the class and then I possibly eat them. <laughs> so another one that's in Music Play Kindergarten, but you can use again, pre-K, kindergarten, one, two. I saw the Montessori school that I used to teach at really did this well. And it's hickety tickety bumblebee. Can you sing your name to me? My name's Denise. Your name's Denise. Hickety tickety bumblebee. Can you sing your name to me? My name's Morgan. Your name's Morgan. Hickety tickety bumblebee. Can you sing your name to me? My name is Carrie Lynn. Your name is Carrie Lynn. And with the littlest ones, you're going to have lots of variations. And that Montessori school had something added on that for the life of me right now, I can't remember. But if I do remember it, I will give it to you. Okay, number concentration is in music play three. And in this game, you give everybody numbers. So you're number one, I'm number two, you're number three. And we sing, don't forget your number, don't forget your name. When you're ready, start the game. So it's a nice so me do piece. It's all tts and taws. So a good reading song for your students. I'm going to go to it in the song list. And I really like the concept slides, especially now that we've split these up. So I'm going to go to the notation slide, hide the, the audio because I don't need it. So I would do this with third grade as a reading song. Wrote, reading, immersion. Three ways to teach a song. You don't always have to do I sing, you sing by rote. This should be a reading song for third grade. So whatever rhythm names you use, if you use do's and due days or toss and toddies, you use whatever you do, but read the rhythms with me together. We're going to use toss and tees. Ready, go. T T T T ta ta. T T T T ta 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 ta. And I'm using one of Artie's sayings. I'm going to be in the key of Denise instead of in the key that it's written because my my voice is damaged. We're we're under um, construction. construction. We're we're trying to get it back. It's not quite there yet. So we're going to do um, the solfege in the key of Denise. Ready, go. So, so, me, me, so, me. So, so, me, me, so. So, me, so, me. So, so, do. And because sometimes there's a disconnect between solfa and actually applying it to a song, I'm going to get Morgan and Carrie Lynn to sing the words of the song. I'm going to sing the solfa at the same time. Here we go. Don't, Don't forget, forget your... Oh, I'm supposed to sing the solfa. <laughs> My bad. Ready, go. So, so, me, me, so, me. So, so, me, me, so. So, me, so, me. So, so, do. And that makes it a really easy reading song. Let's all sing it together. Don't forget your number. Don't forget your name. When you're ready, start the game. If we have anybody from Cypress Fairbanks, please put it in the chat because you guys are heroes. You take double classes for the whole year, which means you have 50 or more kids. And I had a really, really strong teacher from Cypress Fairbanks that said what she does is she takes these paper plates and she puts numbers on them because she doesn't expect that the kids are going to remember when there's 50 numbers. And she puts numbers on them and she hands them out to her students as they come into the classroom. When you have a smaller class, you can number off like we did, one, 
two, three. We have a really small class, <laughs> <laughs> and then we can, um, then we can sing. So I'll sing one, and you sing back your name. Carrie Lynn. Three. Morgan. Two. Denise. Three. Morgan. One. Carrie Lynn. It's going to be a lot trickier for your kids when you have 24 of them <laughs> than when you have three of us. But it really works well. I don't have to remember the names because I sing the number. They sing back their names. Mm -hmm. And that's why I quite like this one mm -hmm. in third grade. So that is the number concentration game. I'm going to go to fifth grade, and this really isn't a reading song because it's got the, the Timka rhythm, the dotted uh, 8 16th rhythm. But the solfa should be reading material for your fifth grade. <clears throat> they might have forgotten it by now, but let's hope. If I move us over, we can see this, but you guys can't. So we have here pitch letter names and solfa for fifth grade. Starting in fourth, I include both in these little things. So if you're not doing solfish with your fifth, then you would say, okay, our notes are A, F sharp, and D. Let's sing them. And we would, let's actually try and do this in the right key. And I don't have an F sharp, so you're going to have to find it yourself. So it would be um, A, F sharp, A, F sharp, B. A, F sharp, A. A, F sharp, okay. I, need put, I need to put that F sharp on. This is not going to work otherwise. <clears throat> but you could sing the pitches, especially if I had a piano right there. It would be a much easier. Let's sing the soulfish. That would be lots easier. So we're going to start with the so. Show me your hand signs. There we go. So, so me, me, so me, so, so me, me, so me, so, so me, me, so. Me so, so, do. And now all the blanks are there because the way we play this is I sing my name, I sing someone else's. You sing your name, someone else's. And because there's only three of us, you can go back and forth <laughs> if you wish. I'm sorry, but I'm going to go into the key of Denise again. Concentration, everybody ready when you hear your name. The game begins. Denise Morgan. Morgan Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn. Denise. Denise Carrie Lynn. <laughs> Carrie Lynn Morgan. And if the kids are that good, let's speed it up. Or if you have an out, somebody doesn't sing on the beat when they should. If you have an out change tempo. So mm. what's a tempo that's faster than Andante? Let's go presto. Let's go presto. presto. Oh, we're jumping really fast. Here we go. Concentration. Everybody ready. When you hear your name, the game begins. Denise, Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn, Denise. Denise, Morgan. Morgan, Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn, Morgan. Morgan, Denise. Denise, Morgan. Morgan, Denise. Denise, Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn. <laughs> I'm getting so, nervous. <laughs> the pulse is racing. The heartbeats are up to uh, 97 beats per minute. <clears throat> but that is fun. That is lots of fun. So that is the con. I don't need that. I just want to escape. So I'm going to go uh, to the, uh, the song. If I go back to concentration, I'm going to close it. And I'm going to look for the song Jolly Rhythm. And I'm pretty sure there's only one. There's Jolly Rhythm. It's in fourth grade. And again, I'm going to pull up the notation slide because there's a fair amount of this that we can do by rote or by reading as well. Um, this one is do, la, so, do, 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 la, so, so, do, 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 la, so. Let's do that again. Do, 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 la, so, so, do, 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 la, so. That's the sung part. So, let's get the rhythm, the jolly, jolly rhythm. Ready, -o? Let's go. And you could echo here. Starting with? Starting with? Zero. Zero. So, again, I would number the class if I'm going to do the numbers. But honestly, I think it's better if we do this 
the same way as the grade five concentration mm -hmm. game, where I go, Denise, Denise, Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn, Carrie Lynn, Morgan. Morgan, Morgan, Denise. Denise, Denise, Morgan. Morgan, Morgan, Carrie Lynn. <laughs> oh, that worked really well with me. So the way it's written is to be numbers, but I think for learning the names, it's better if you actually substitute the names for that. And give your kids a minute before you start this to make sure that they know somebody's name who's <laughs> close to them so that they have that opportunity before they do it. Okay, why isn't this escaping? There we go. It's escaped now. So that's Jolly Rid Rhythm. I'm going to go back to the unit and pretty well everything I'm doing today is coming from back to school unit. And I'm going to go to jump in, jump out. <clears throat> this is a YouTube video. Say it. Jump in, jump out, turn yourself around. I said jump in, jump out, introduce yourself. My name is, and I like, and I can. Now, give your students time to think of something that A, they like, and second, that they can do. So in the concept slide, do we have the words? Yes, we do. So here's the words. Say with me, ready? Jump, jump in, in, jump out, turn, turn yourself around. around. I said jump in, in jump out, out introduce yourself. yourself. My name's Denise. Yeah. And I like cake. Yeah. And I can sing, sort of. Yeah. yeah. All, all, right, right, all right, all right, all right. I should have given myself some time to think about what I actually can do. So we're going to try this one now. So have you got an idea in your head? We're going to see what comes out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I like, and I can. <clears throat> so let's stand up and we got to do the jumping uh -oh. here. Jumping. This jumping, this jumping. This wasn't in the outline. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm really tall and my head's cut off. Oh, yeah, they are really tall. Oh, uh, I'll just go backwards a little bit and then we'll be more in there. Your head's still cut off. <laughs> okay, we'll just jump in there. No, okay. there. There. That's as much of us as we're going to get. One, two, here we go. Jump, jump in, in, jump out, turn yourself around. I said jump in, jump out. Introduce yourself. My name is Carrie Lynn. Yeah. yeah. And I like to drive. Yeah. And I can dance. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, all right. Jump in, jump out, turn yourself around. I said jump in, jump out, introduce yourself. My name's Denise. Yeah. And I can speak Spanish. Yeah. And I like to practice Spanish. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. Jump in. Jump out, turn yourself around. I said jump in, jump out, introduce yourself. My name is Morgan. Yeah. I like Poison Melody. Yeah. I talk about Poison Melody. Yeah. <laughs> all, all right, right, all right, right, all right. right. <laughs> so you get the idea. I think it's lots of fun. And this version avoids saying, I like so-and-so because when my daughter did this in her classroom, that was the version we were using and the girls felt uncomfortable if they were standing next to a boy and saying, and I like Morgan. They just did not have a comfort level with that. So it's, uh, it's changed just a, a little bit. Escape and... What's your heart rate at now? Oh, my heart rate's at, <laughs> oh, it's only at 94. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And then the next one, the video just got put on. This is a YouTube link. So again, I can't take credit for this particular one, but it's a great jump video. In, jump out. Oh, that was supposed to be up the ladder, down the ladder. And I put the wrong. I don't know. It looks like it's the right one. It looks like it's the right one. Maybe, but uh, it's. Refresh the page for me. Nope. nope, I have the wrong one, but I will 
just teach it because I can do that. So it goes. We will fix that before the end of the day. Up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one, the ladder, up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one, the ladder. And then four children, we only have three of us, <laughs> will introduce themselves and you'll say, my name is Carrie Lynn. Your, Your name, name is, is Carrie, Carrie Lynn. Lynn. My name's Denise. Your name's Denise. My name is Morgan. Your name is Morgan. Up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one. The ladder, up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one. The ladder. So you get the idea? You use the up the ladder as a refrain, and in between, you say four names. I have one more that I quite like, and this was invented by a very good music teacher that I know well. <laughs> this or that? Which one's the fact? Share two things about you. We will guess what is which is true. So say the poem with me. Ready, go. This, this or that? that. Which, which one's the fact? fact? Say, say two things about you. you. We, we will guess what is true. true, which is true. So think this through. I can go first. My name's Denise. Here's my fact number one. I love liver. And fact number two, I really like biking on my e-bike. Which one do you think is true? E-bike. E-bike. Absolutely. <laughs> I hate liver. Okay, this is Morgan. Two things about you. One true, one not. I play rock guitar. I'm a welder. Which one is Which true? One is true. I have an advantage because I've known Morgan for 30 years. He is a welder. And if he wanted to, he could play I don't rock, play rock guitar. But you could if you wanted to. Don't it. Absolutely. You can do anything. Okay, carry it. Okay, my two facts. Um, one, I have seen a lion in real life. And two is I have gone scuba diving. Which one? You've seen a lion. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> Carrie Lynn got engaged in Africa yes. last last November, December? Uh, yeah, October. October. Mm -hmm. So this one is fun. It has a body percussion piece to it as well. And the body percussion is not terribly difficult, uh, but it's enough of a challenge for your older kids to stay interested. So it's stomp, clap, stomp, clap, clap, stomp, clap, stomp, clap. Clap, pat, pat, clap, clap, snap, snap, clap, clap. Now, trick is, can we do it while we say the poem? Let's Here try. we go. This or that. Which one's the fact? Share two things about you. We will guess which is true. Uh, which, which is which, which is, is true. true. Let's do one yeah. more time. We'll get it right this time. I hope that everybody is sh putting their cameras on and showing that you're doing it with us. Here we go. This or that. Which one's the fact? Share two things about you. We will guess which is true. So adding to it, extending, and making it a little more challenging for your older kids. Um, Michelle, do we have any questions about any of the name games? None so far. None so far. Please throw your questions into the chat because we're going to go on to music room rules. And we have a number of variants of these. I really like this lesson. This is a poster that you can print out and you can put up in your wall. Let's read together, and I'll enforce my rhythm yeah. on these two people. <laughs> Here we go. Make good choices. Always be responsible. Use good manners. Be nice and be kind. Speak when you're called on. Always put your hand up in the music room. Always try your best. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. So the first four work really well as a body percussion piece. So I'm going to go to the slides. And the slides have a body percussion 
that actually I wrote with the help of some students. So this isn't entirely mine, but let's stand up and try this. So we're going to stomp, make good choices, always be responsible, use good manners, be nice and be kind. Let's practice that again for anybody who's new to this. And I really hope you're standing up and doing this with us. Here we go. Make good choices always be responsible use good manners be nice and be kind and if you're listening to this as a podcast i should reiterate that we're stomping on the first four patting on the next four beats then we clap and then we snap and i've done that to remember it goes from the bottom up that covers the first two, the M and the U. Now we're going to speak when you're called on, and I'm going to stop on speak when you're called on, because to me, this is really important that the kids aren't talking when I'm talking. Speak when you're called on. Always put your hand up. And I put my hand up on the word up. There's no sound made, which really is a body percussion, but I feel it fits there. So let's try that again. Speak when you're called on always put your hand up in the music room always try your best so let's try page two together speak starts with the stomp then we clap and we end with a pat ready and speak when you're called on always put your hand up in the music room always try your best can you remember it all here we go make good choices always be responsible use good manners be nice and be kind speak when you're called on always put your hand up in the music room always try your best so those four those first four m-u-s-i work really well with this but we haven't got anything for the c so we can do it as either an austin auto pattern or we could do it as an introduction and ending and this is where i want my students to create their own body percussion to go with it and what i generally find i have to say it about four times to give you time to figure out what to do. Some classes, eight times, and you get some classes, 12 times. But if you haven't done a lot of creating with your kids, this is a good way to start. We've modeled for them the different forms of body percussion. If they've done any of Christian Mejia's body percussion on here, they might know about butterfly claps, and they might know about chest. If you haven't, we'll just stick to snap, clap, pat, and stop. But I'll say care for the instruments and all of the equipment four times, and I'll count it off. And my students are going to make up body percussion to go with it. Something nice and easy we can teach everybody. Ready, go. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Okay. You ended up on the same thing. Yeah. Did you realize that? Yeah, I was kind of. Yeah, I was like <laughs> I was kind of getting funny. ideas. Yeah, 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 getting getting ideas. ideas, and that that happens in the classroom too. That they oh, she's doing that. That looks really <laughs> yeah. cool. I'm going to do that too. So, carry it in. Teach us okay. what you did. So, care for the instruments and all of the equipment. So we're going down care? again. Yes. Yes. Care, care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. That actually works really right, nice. Like so this. let's try it as ostinato. So do, do you have this? Let's practice one more time. So you out there can do ostinato if you choose that part. Ready? Yeah. Care, care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. So you're doing that part, and we'll try it as ostinato first, then we'll try it maybe a different way. Sure. This is the national standards creating. How many ways can you think of to do something? Re revise, refine. That's what they keep talking about in the national standards. Is we try it out, do we like it? If not, 
we change it. So we're going to do the ostinato twice, and then I'm going to do the music room rules, and the ostinato keeps going. Okay, okay? ready, go. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and now we start. all of the equipment. Make Care good the choices. Always be responsible. Use good manners. Be nice and be kind. Speak Care when you're called on. Always put your hand up in the music room. Always try your best. That was kind that was of fun. fun. That yes. was fun. So we would talk about what we noticed, what we wondered. What did you like about it? I liked that the uh, pats lined up. <laughs> that was fun. That was cool. Probably not supposed to. But <laughs> in, in Orf rules, we, we were not supposed to have a line in with us. Um, I liked that there's a beat at the end, mm -hmm. so stomping oh. at the very end instead of the rest. I so like let's let's try it another way. Let's try care for the instruments and all of the equipment as an introduction instead. Mm -hmm. So everybody will say the poem together. If you really want them hearing the words, doing it as an intro or ending works better. Do you want to do it as an ending as well, or do you just want to do it as an intro? It's important. It should be beginning and ending. I agree. I think caring for the, I mean, these instruments are massively expensive. This is a beautiful sonar xylophone, and I don't even know what it costs, but I know it's a lot. And I don't want that messed around with. So please take good care of the instruments. So should we start quietly and crescendo? Oh, yeah. And at the end, maybe a decrescendo? Or do we want to crescendo and get really loud at the end? I like crescendo going get yeah. loud at the end myself. Okay, we're going to do both then. All right. okay. So care for the instruments twice beginning with crescendo, music room rules, and then end okay. with it with it as an ending. Okay, okay re refresh my memory. Here we go. Care, care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Make good choices. Always be responsible. Use good manners. Be nice and be kind. Speak when you're called on. Always put your hand up in the music room. Always try your best. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Meant. Care for the instruments and all of the equipment. Did we like that? Yes. yes. Which do we like better, with the ostinato or doing it as in an introduction ending? I like the introduction. I like the introduction like ending as well. And it makes the words clearer, mm -hmm. I think. I saw Erin Heindel, and I don't think she's on this um, webinar today, but I saw Erin Heindel's class when she was teaching at West Park Elementary doing this on bucket drums. Mm. So she had taken the body percussion idea and transferred it to bucket drumming, and it was a very neat performance. Yeah. She did it at their school's first assembly in uh in the school year so it was early september she had taught the rules and then it became their first performance i think it's a brilliant idea so how much time do we have i might have to just quickly run through a few things the r-e-s-p-e-c-t activity this is where the music room rules are um richard foltz one of our music play teachers made it into a song so we actually have his notation for that and I think we put a track in with it so that you could wrap it if you wish to. There's an accompaniment track with it. Make good choices, always be. So we're going to have to actually record that, I think, at some point. Going on to the R-E-S-P-E-C-T. So I'm going to use the projectable so I can make it again full screen. So we'll simply read this together and we have our notation. Ready? Go. R E S P E C T. Respect yourself and respect me. Just one word is all you need with R E S P E C T. Then the student creations would be creating verses. Be careful with school prop. Per T R E S P E C T. Be polite to everyone you meet. R E S P E C T. So another version 
of what you can do. If you don't like my music rules, you can try that one. Good, better, best. I, I like this. I like this poem because what it talks about is striving to do your best. I was listening to a new audiobook last night and they were talking about pleasure. What makes you happy? And happiness comes from being excellent. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. This is this is what we would call in music the performance high. Right. After you've done mm -hmm. the musical and it's gone really well, mm -hmm. it makes you happy yeah. because you've done something excellent. And I don't care what endeavor it is. If you've done something really well, it feels really, really good. But sometimes you have to really put some effort in. So this is the poem, and it's a traditional poem. I didn't make this up. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. What do you think the poem's about? Doing the best you can. Doing the best you can. And keep yeah. doing it. And keep doing <laughs> yeah. it. Exactly. Never let it rest. Getting feedback. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this could potentially set tone for your music room for the entire year. Okay, why did that? Can I not go to the next slide? There's more slides. Where did they go? There is many more slides for that. Creative ideas, maybe? Uh, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe I'm just in the wrong set. So there is, yes. Okay. So try it with body percussion. We don't have to do that now because one, we don't have enough time. <laughs> We've left ourselves short of time, but you could certainly try that and then discuss it and be creative with it. Now I have my arrows. Let's try my body percussion with it. One, two, here we go. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. This is an arty idea. Take away the words for one line and just do the body percussion. So let's start by taking away the pat. Here we go. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. Take away two lines. Ready, go. Until the good is better and the better is best. Three lines. Oh, Can we do it? We have to read. <laughs> <laughs> we have to think. Here we go. Better is best. I yes. I like it. I like it a lot. It's fun doing that. And again, thank you, Artie, if you're still on, because this is your idea you to can't. do that. You can't be great if you can't audiate. You saying? can't be great if yeah. you can't oh, audiate. Yeah. Now, you could potentially transfer to bucket drums as well. You could try it in canon. <laughs> we're going to go together and we're going to let Morgan do it by himself. So we start good, better, best, and then you get okay. to come in after. One, two, here we go. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. And the better, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. And the better is best. How far could you take it? If I was Doug Goodkin, I would be doing it in seventeen parts. <laughs> that's, that's how he operates. But this is it. It's fun to do it at least in two parts. Create an ostinato with ideas from the poem. Good, good, better, best. Good, good, better, best. Good, better, best. Best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. Best. So I don't have to have really good ideas all the time. Eventually, one of them is going to stick. Uh, another day, create a melody for the poem. So I have this beautiful sonar orf instrument. You get to go play a C, G, Bordoon on it. And Morgan gets to make up a melody for that using so me do. You can throw a lot in as well as if you want. Okay. Ready, go. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. 
Yay, Morgan. I get him to do Threw it because he's got such a nice voice. We have not rehearsed this. No. <laughs> so, Where's your tip jar? Where's your tip jar? <laughs> yeah, an awesome job. So try it with body percussion. Do you like it? What do you notice? That's the, the beginning slides. So this one little poem could be your back to school lesson. We have on the website here, classroom management assistance, and you will need these at some point in the year. Music award, I like this one. Good behavior, bravo. In fact, that's on Lana's redo list. She's gonna make it prettier than I did. Today I was caught in music class doing something amazing. Co copy a big stack of them, cut it in half, have them by the door and try and write at least one per music class. You wanna have at least three of these out for every bad behavior note that you have. So that is a nice little one. Here is the oops note. I, I need help respecting the music teacher, respecting the class, respecting the music supplies. So that note goes home. I used to do it in my students' agendas. They'd bring their agenda to me if we had a problem in music class and I'd write the note in the daily agenda because that got signed by the parents every night. So they saw it and I had one child who was being silly in music class and I sent the note home. The next day comes a full page grade two student handwritten apology for being silly in music class. That was a good school. I should never have left it. It was awesome. Uh, make good choices reflection. Remember when we did make good choices, always be responsible. Read the rules. Today I did not make good choices in music class. Describe what happened. Describe what you should do next time. Teacher signs, parent signs. I would make a photocopy of this, keep it in a binder, by classes, so you can see if you've got an ongoing problem with any one child, and hopefully the parent does see it, sign it, return it. No guarantees. Uh, time to pause. If you have a timeout chair, this is a good thing to stick over top of it. Read the music rules and think about how you can make better choices. A great classmate poster. How can you be a really good classmate? You try to be kind, helpful, friendly, responsible, respectful. You try to always help others, share. This is not easy to teach children. I have six grandchildren and I have a pair of twins in them. And the twins have a little tendency sometimes to gang up on the littler ones. And we have to talk about being kind and being nice. Be safe, be respectful, be responsible. I'm going to get this redone with four Bs because I want be kind in there as well. So that's in my wish list. And then I want to have this little song. Where did I put it? I made a little song for it. Here it is. So this is the little song and we can do this with the ORF instruments as well. And I think the only way to make this really big is to make it. You can go full screen. Oh, I can. I didn't know that button was there. Look at that. I'm going to make it even bigger. Okay, Morgan, help me. Um, here's the G. We'll try and do this in pitch. So you're going to play the C, then G, then C, then G, C, then G. And here we go. How can we make our classroom a place to learn and grow? Welcoming and friendly to everyone we know. So that's the song. And each of your students would make a little sheet with what you should be in music class to make it a place to learn and grow, to make it a safe place to learn and grow. So be kind be respectful be responsible be a good listener and all those things could go in there so there's another little activity that you can do and i shouldn't should remember you can always add these to your list to your my list and have them in your own folders so pdfs get xed out there Okay, <laughs> I did not talk about sticker poster, and I forgot to put it up. So I'm going to talk about sticker poster for the last few minutes. Oh, really? 
This is what my, I'm going to stop sharing actually, so that I can show you. This is my sticker poster, what it's going to be when it's done. It's going to be a castle and it's a very pixelated picture. And what it comes with, it comes with about 5,000 stickers. So I have stickers of all kinds of sizes and colors, and it comes with a color code. So I, if I'm doing dark green, I know that dark green goes on the letter H. If I'm doing white, it goes on the letter P. So you hang this sticker poster. I was supposed to have this all done before webinar. I did a webinar from 10 till 12.30 today. I've had umpteen meetings. It has been a tiny bit busy. So this is my sticker poster. And if you catch somebody doing something well, you say, at the end of the class, you get to add a sticker to the sticker poster. These things are, we don't sell them. They're made by a company called Let's Stick Together. Let's Stick Together. I think they're brilliant. I emailed them and said, we really would like a music themed poster. And they haven't come up one, with one yet, but they've got some beautiful hot air balloons. They've got this, this capsule one was on sale. It cost $30 and it, they shipped to Canada. So it was shipped to me here, but it's really, quite a neat activity. I filled out some more of it with my grandchildren because to them it was like doing a jigsaw puzzle. They thought it was really fun. My daughter and I have discussed this in great detail. She's ordered her sticker poster for her classroom this year. It's a year long project. You're not going to try and do this with only one class. You do this with all your classes over the course of the whole year. And one of our teachers that came to Austin, Hannah Meese, she, I'm not sure where Hannah teaches in Texas, but she's a really good teacher. She did the calculation that if she ordered the large poster, she would have to give six stickers to every class every day of the school year to get it done by the end of the year. So you might wanna order the small one, just try it out and see how it works. My daughter and I discussed this and we decided that rather give it than giving kids color choice, each week I'd change the color. And that way you don't have kids humming and hawing and taking too much time deciding on the color. And the other thing I would absolutely do is I would change the color every week. I would also tell the kids at the end of class, you get to put a sticker on the sticker board and then they have to remember that they've got the turn to put a sticker on the sticker board so as i'm dismissing everybody line up but xyz who got stickers to put on the sticker board they get to put it on the sticker board and out they go to class so i think that is one of the coolest ideas i've seen this year I really like it. I think it's a fun project to do over the course of the year. Music stickers can cost a ridiculous amount of money and where do they end up? Tossed in the garbage. It's just a waste of our resources. So if you do a big thing like this, I think if it was a year long project at the end of the year, you might even wanna laminate it and then you have every year's big sticker poster to carry on with for the next year. I would love to have your questions. What questions do you have after our, and uh, I actually think that was kind of fun having Carrie Lynn and Morgan in on the webinar. I think we should do this more often. Thank you, yeah. Carrie Lynn and Morgan for doing this. Triple duty today. <clears throat> so I do actually have three questions for you, Denise. Perfect. Perfect, okay. Number one is what was the clap after the butterfly clap? I think maybe you want to just oh. take a little look where butterfly stuff clap? is. And the other thing that Christian Mejia does as a lot of his body percussion and performance, it's chest chest. So the two things that I've noticed that Christian adds to our typical ORF repertoire of body percussion is chest chest and butterfly. That's the butterfly clap. Christian Mejia's body percussion is in instruments, body percussion, body percussion, and start with his level one. His first five are very primary. 
If you're starting with older kids, start with his level six and work your way through to the end. You get to his level two, it's it's difficult. It's really hard. We tried to learn one of his Christmas pieces in 2020 and we couldn't do it. So I never did get the advanced version. I got the basic version, but not the harder one. So it will challenge your upper elementary kids. More questions. Perfect. Okay, um, I don't know if you wanna hop into Music Play Online because we do have a question about how to add things to my list and then maybe show where Christian stuff is. So I am going to, I'm gonna have to do a minus here. So this is the, this, this would be the my lists. So I made this my list today. I did it for a district that I did a PD for. I'm going to use, I'm gonna make a new one because these are both quite long. So I add a new list and I'm going to call it back to school. I can categorize it so it's easier to find, but I'm not going to today. I'm just going to add it. And then if I am in the back to school units, there's units. I don't know icons very well, but I'm getting there. I'm working on it. And back to school, I can usually, I know why that's not showing. It's because I've got it so big. Here's back to school. So if I want to add any of these activities to the my list, I will go to the circle name game. And it says here, add to my list. So I'm gonna add it to back to school. And now, now when I go out of here and into the regular area, if I go to my lists, I have back to school and I have in it what I just added. You can add videos, you can add interactives, you can add concept slides, you can add games, you can even add some of the PDFs even showed up that you could add. So before I go out of here, are there any other questions that involve Music Play Online? Uh, yes, and one last thing, you can also add from other places on the internet, right? Add procedure. Of course, bottom. yes. If I go to YouTube, my one of my favorite activities is the line rider videos. I haven't convinced them to give us permissions on our stuff yet. So I copy the URL. And then I go into my, my list and I need to go to the bottom of it, which I can't quite see, but here it is, add procedure. And now I add the URL here and I tell it that it's line rider and it's in the hall. And I can add it. And now when I click on it, it goes right to that YouTube video. It's just a really, really handy tool. Any other Music Play Online questions while I'm here before I stop sharing? Um, well, we do have a question. This is the last question. Um, is this an American or a Canadian program? It's a question from BC. Uh, and I guess you have Music Play Online open, so you could do both. Uh, which program? Uh, music Play Online. They are brand new. Okay, Music Play Online was created by me and I'm Canadian. I grew up in British Columbia in Campbell River, went to the University of Victoria and then moved to Saskatchewan and taught there for a number of years, pretty much in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan. Then I moved to Red Deer, Alberta, which is nice because my husband really likes his open fields on the one side and I really like the mountains on the other. So Red Deer, Alberta is home. So this was created with British Columbia Alberta, Ontario curriculum in my hands. But we have since done a lot of revising and now we are aligned to American national standards. We meet and exceed all state standards and all provincial standards. British Columbia is really interesting because the curriculum is very skimpy. It gives you some big questions and it gives you a few concepts. So having a a program like Music Play Online to rely on for sequencing, I think is almost essential for our British Columbia teachers. Awesome, and that's, that's it. You are good. 
Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see your beautiful faces. I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful school year. It's so nice to see friends here. Thank you, Artie, for coming and joining us. <clears throat> you can see how much I've learned from you over the years, can't you? <laughs> Every time That's I teach very kind this of you woman, to say, and I think it works both ways. It probably does. I wish I had your wicked sense of humor and could pull off the jokes like that, but <laughs> that's that's not innate. But thank you everybody for coming and I really hope it is a wonderful school year for you and this is the best year ever. Um, I should have mentioned one other thing that I didn't. On Music Play Online, there is a section called Vocal Warmups. Go to that section, look up the Yoga for Voice and start doing it because it'll save and protect your voice and you won't end up damaged like me and like Artie. If you look after it now while you're young, you're gonna have that nice healthy voice right through to your retirement. So thanks everybody. <clears throat>